What's up everybody? Welcome back to the Grow Family Network and today we got a special video. It's all about our foundational plant of our whole garden. Uh, probably about two years ago we actually bought a few seeds in of comfrey and, and it has been through my research and the way we've been using it around the property it actually has been I mean what they call like a three-fold type plant. Uh, we use it chicken feed. I throw some to my chickens. Um, it's actual when I first got it the reason why we got this plant was for uh, soil fertility it was to try to build up the fertility of the soil and try to depend less on store-bought fertilizers and start bringing in some of that green fertilizer uh, things that will benefit the property over the long haul uh, so this plant is more so of uh, if you got property or, or you got you got land or you got a garden and you're gonna be there for a while if you want to get something established this is going to be one of the first plants that i think you should try to get established uh, once you get established or once you get it established it's going to be super easy to keep up with the amount that you're going to get uh, you can just run over this with a lawnmower or a weed whacker if you don't like it um, but what i'm going to show you today is um, actually how you can propagate this um, if you don't want it it's one of those evasive type of plants if you don't want it, you cut it down. If you do want it, I'm gonna show you how to turn one plant into 30 plants. And if you come on in, I'll show you. Trying to uh, actually, I guess what I wanna say is, get this from seed is kinda difficult um, because the seeds kinda mature daily at different phases. So if you look right here, you're gonna see this hard looking, you can see the bulge on it. And then right here you have this like nothing is in it. And then here you have it at a uh, flowering stage or pre-flowering stage. Here, let me get one. You got it where the bees are gonna be on it right here. Um, if you do nothing to this plant, it's not like a lettuce or anything that is just gonna hold the seed eventually what this plant will do is once this actually goes to seed here if you want to harvest seeds from this thing and it took me the longest time to figure this out you have to get it at this stage once these seeds dry out they're going to just fall to the ground and then you'll have comfrey coming up all around your plant so i'm going to show you this is actually the comfrey seed you see that green seed in there that seed is actually going to turn black but if you wait for that seed to turn black when you come to this pod once it turns black it's just going to fall in the ground you won't ever get them so the way i've been keeping the seeds is when i come out and i see that the seeds are in there you can feel it you can tell it's bulged up and big you can tell that's the ones that have the seeds in them I just take those out and kind of let them uh, dry out in a bucket, a paper bag. Other than that, if you don't want to do anything, you just let them fall to the ground themselves and then you'll start getting a lot of comfy plants. And I'll show you how that looks over here. This is actually one of the first comforts that we planted uh, from seed. And I won't give the backstory on it. Uh, but we had a plum tree here mm -hmm. that actually when this branch fell from the neighbor's yard it actually crushed everything we had here so we kind of had to start over um, so what we did here was we just let this grow up and just grow wild and it started from dropping the seeds it started throwing up all these little small comfy plants and I didn't know I thought they were coming from like uh like root propagation so i want you to come in here and i'm going to show you some of the i guess characteristics of this thing what i'm going to do is i'm going to dig this up and show you why this is one powerful plant so let's get in there i'm going to take that a loose i think i got another one on this side let's see so even as a small plant let me show you that as a small plant, I chopped it off. Let me get another. 
but this plant has such a large tap root. Let me see if I can not chop this one off. Probably chop that one some too. Ah. But this plant really develops over its lifespan a real large tap root. It's not like a regular plant that just sends all these little fine roots. It actually sends out this large tap root and it just goes deeper and deeper in the ground as it gets older. And what it does is it pulls up the nutrients out of the soil from longer or deeper than all your other trees can get it. And it actually brings up those nutrients and stores it in the leaves. So the idea behind this plant is you take those leaves, as it stores up those nutrients in the leaves, you just take those same leaves and just give it right back to the soil. So you're taking nutrients that's like five, 10, 15 feet in the ground you're bringing it up and you're laying it down on top of your soil which is why they call this one of the best chop and drop uh, plants that you can find anywhere as far as soil fertility I'll go show you one more right over here and this is actually one that we really 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 um, have done a lot of the, our own personal research on and this one we've been chopping this thing down for two years and it just comes back over and over so all we do is come here and take this this is that little stalk it doesn't even matter how you yank on them and pull them you can see you got more coming out over here and you just basically taking all of that greenage and you're putting it down even as a mulch layer just take all of that. If you don't want it, if you don't want this thing to grow wild, then all you gotta do is every time you see it going to seed, just go ahead on and just don't let it seed out. But I like to let it seed out because I, I want to get more and more and more. That way I can have more uh more leaves to kind of put down around my trees. What I found out with using this is that it actually has become that living mulch and that dying mulch at the same time. So as a living mulch, it doesn't really let a lot of grass grow up around your tree. And as a dying mulch, what I would like to call it, it actually feeds your soil while it's dying and decaying. So you can look out here. These are all little comfrey plants that's just gonna keep coming up. It's gonna keep coming out. Uh, one of those plants that might be a good problem to have if you can, uh, I guess if you want to control it. Like I say, even if even if this was too much, you can actually take this whole thing if you raise chickens. I don't know about rabbits. I haven't really fed this to rabbits before, but I know my chickens love this. Then I kind of, when I saw the chickens eating it, I didn't know if it was good for them. Then I got online and I started doing some research and I started looking at how everybody's chickens love these things. And so we actually do feed it to the chickens from now, you know, not, like full diet on chickens but every now and then we grab a free, few leaves and bring them to the chicken cage so basically basically that's it if you got a a plant or something that that you don't want to cut around and you want it to to be mulched up or you want it to to try to keep the grass from growing around it that is uh what i would say uh one method you could use um, one thing that I would do differently probably is I probably would in the future planting around my other trees I would plant this out just a little bit further so uh, to me it does take away some of the energy from the tree uh, so you'll have to water it a little bit more than if it wasn't there so I, I know that sometimes um, also if you let it grow up too big and get too mature that it will start robbing nutrients from the tree. So it's good to really keep it as a chop and drop. When you see it kind of grow up, go ahead on and pull the leaves off, uh, drop it down. That way, the energy that is taken from the tree, those leaves are gonna feed right back into it. Uh, so then if you want these and share them with your friends, like I said, with your friends, you probably wouldn't be able to ship this, 
but you can definitely catch those seeds and probably ship it so it's all on how you want to do it as a home gardener if you want to uh, start selling seeds because these these things are hard to find uh, you probably have to I think about three years ago we paid about how much we paid like eight like I think it was like eight ninety nine like, plus shipping. yeah about, about ten dollars and all we got was like 25 seeds out of those 25 seeds we probably planted 15 of them and two of them germinated so the rest of them it probably was old seeds so if you get fresh seeds yourself they germinate just like that so you eventually start to have a good problem all around your future fruit trees which would actually offer that uh that nutrient availability when you you don't have the money for fertilizer well you can get this stuff and actually if you google comfrey tea that's all this is is they take this plant and put it in a five gallon bucket of water and let it sit in the sun for two weeks or a month and then you take this and you feed your plant so uh good for soil fertility good for if you don't have the money for fertilizer it's just a good all-around plant that i wanted to share with you uh don't have any seeds available but the knowledge that i have i wanted to give it to you so uh, if you like the comfort plant or if you was thinking about it or if you just heard about it and you wanted to know a little bit more then that's pretty much all you need to know about the great comfort plant now there's other uh, medicinal things that I've never taken it internally so that's something that's totally on your own I don't want to talk about it on this channel uh, but you can look at other channels uh, other sites online and people have actually use this thing supposedly over the longest period of time as a medicinal herb as a tea or whatever I don't do it uh, personally so I wouldn't lie to you and tell you that I did I don't I just feed it to the chickens and use it as as a green mulch per se uh, so that's it for today's episode thank you for watching the Grow Family Network and as always grow 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 your own fertilizer peace